let's talk about the ongoing Battle of Alberta. Hi, I'm Gio. I'm a professional sportscaster, and this is my channel where we talk about all things Pacific Division hockey. The Battle of Alberta has been one of the craziest series in the Stanley Cup playoffs so far, and we are still only three games in at a 2-1 score to Edmonton. Let's talk about some of the major points in this series so far. Firstly, Mike Smith and that first game. With a scoreline of 9-6 to Calgary, there was a lot of conversation about whether or not Mike Smith was doing a good job as a goaltender in that first game. It's pretty clear that it wasn't his best game. In the six minutes 05 that he was on the ice, he let in three shots. Calgary scored their first two goals within the first minute of play and their third goal in the seventh minute of play. And I think something really important to consider here is what kind of a mental toll that is going to have potentially on the opposing team. It's one thing to blame the goaltender for just doing a terrible job, but another thing to understand that having such an aggressive onslaught at the start of the game can really throw off your expectations for what the pacing of that game is going to be, and that can have quite a mental effect on the opposing team. Calgary were doing an awesome job at capitalizing on these rushes that they were starting and really supporting each other to use the space that had been opened up for them. They also did a really great job at denying basically any meaningful puck control from Edmonton when the play was in the Calgary zone. And they did a great job of actually moving the play back over to the Edmonton zone pretty much each time it got there. Also, going back to the topic of Mike Smith, he was able to save the first shot that was opened up onto him in game number two even though the first Calgary goal then came just a couple of minutes later. <laughs> game two was such an interesting game in and of itself because Calgary opened up with such early dominance that seemed to wane after the first period. Edmonton were the only team who were able to get a goal on a penalty kill, and that actually still remains true even now after the third game. Let's not also forget that the as-declared no goal for Edmonton, had that gone in, had it been just a millisecond sooner and gone in before the whistle had blown, that could have been a serious tilter for Calgary and actually affected their momentum even more. So this could have been an even worse game for Calgary in the end. Game three for me was super interesting. It was the first game that we'd seen on Edmonton ice and it actually felt like it was just a completely different series to what we'd seen the first two games. Calgary didn't open up with that characteristic early aggression that we'd already seen in games one and two. They didn't get their first blood per se. And it seemed more and more as the game went on that that had almost been a necessity for them. Edmonton were also taking a serious number of shots in comparison to Calgary. By the end of the first period, it was 20 to seven. By the end of the game, ultimately, it had evened out a little more at 41 to 32, but that's still quite a difference. And this definitely wasn't helped by the fact that anytime the play was in the Edmonton zone, it looked really messy. Like there was never any real time for Calgary to capitalize on that puck control because it was taken off of them so quickly, which is very different to how things felt in game one. So Mike Smith didn't even have to contend with the puck anywhere near as much as he did back in the first game. I mean, the number of shots that Calgary took against Mike Smith in those six minutes, 05 seconds of game number one is the same number of shots that Calgary took in their entirety in the first period of game three. And overall, Calgary took 16 fewer shots in this entire game than they did in game number one. Edmonton had a lot of odd man rushes and some really beautiful assists as a result. I mean, just thinking about McDavid last second passing over to Ivana Kane in the second period. Oh, sublime. And of course, we can't forget that Kane got his hat trick in this game too. So overall, game three was just so much cleaner for the Edmonton Oilers. And one of the big questions that I have right now is, are Calgary going to be able to regain that moment? momentum and sort things out or is it just kind of a slide that they're going to be falling down now you know especially as we're going to have to wait before they can go back to home ice is that going to be a big effect on their mental too i think edmonton proved especially in game number three that they used their first line very diligently and that is something that calgary are going to have to be exceptionally vigilant about when going into these upcoming games i think this series is far from over and there's still a lot of room for craziness but I do worry about whether the real greatness that we saw from Calgary is kind of slipping away from them now. Originally, I predicted this series as a 4-3 to Calgary. And right now I am starting to doubt it. I'm not going to go back on it because I refuse to be one of those people, but... I am, I'm doubting it a little bit. I'm very curious what you guys think though. So let me know in the comments how you think that this series is going to end, what you see happening coming up in this series, because so far it has been such a huge source of entertainment and I have absolutely loved every second. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you in the next video. Goodbye.